Oh, there we go. My bad. To click twice. Okay, let's get moving. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the Find It, Map It, Trade It webinar. Uh, my name is Dave, a.k.a. E-Man. That's my name given to me in the Java pit by Stephanie Cameron. Uh, I've been trading with her for, well, six years, since uh, 2016. And it's a really tight-knit community, the Java Pit. It's an educational trading room, and we have a couple hundred, uh, we have a couple hundred traders that are in there, and we all work very hard together to help each other learn, and progress, and it's become a really big family essentially. Steph's like a sister to me as well, and uh, yeah, the Java Pit is my second family, and so out of that. We've developed a lot of tools and helpful things and strategies that we've been helping each other and teaching each other to use at the same time. So assuming that everybody's human here, I'm going to make that logical leap. I want to share with you some common trading struggles that I've had as a trader and that maybe you can relate to as well. So here... What do you trade? And what's my trading plan coming into this? There's too many stocks to watch. Actually, there's more than 10,000 stocks listed in the US alone, right? So where do we start? The amount of information is overwhelming. You know, we have wars, recessions, depressions. We have analysts. We have, you know, Jim Cramer saying the sky is falling, the stocks are going up. Nothing makes any sense, right? So as part of our trading strategy, when we have all of this information coming at us that we can't make head or tails of, how does that affect our trading? Well, also, where do I get in or out? There's a huge fear of missing out. So you're getting in too late, um, buying at the top, selling at the bottom. Fear of getting in. You see a stock get away from you and it's too late and you wind up chasing it. What's my confidence level in the trade? And like I had mentioned, right, all of this contradicting information, everything coming at you, how do you make educated and, you know, profitable trades? Is the stock going up, down or sideways? That adds to the level of confusion that's there. But let's address some of these with a question. And maybe this will give us some clarity. Would you buy Uber if you knew the price was below a $552 million trade? And, you know, pausing here for a little bit of effect, right? Dramatic effect. How many of you have seen something like this across your block trade indicator or your time in sales a 13.3 million share trade on Uber. Not just one, but two. There's 26.6 million shares here traded between 2118 and 2035. $552 million. So what's interesting about this is all of the frustrations that I just Ex explained, you know, and you guys can probably relate to, well, let's answer the question. Would you buy Uber if you knew its price was below a half a billion dollar trade? We're trying, so look at the, look at the low price here, 2035, right? If we're trading at $19, are you going to buy it? We don't know what direction this is yet, and it hasn't moved, and I have some fantastic things to show you about it. So, the answer is no. What happens when an analyst says, buy Uber? Um, there's half a billion dollars in front of me. It's like running a stop sign, right? So when we think of things like that, all of this frustration and things kind of melts away because fear of missing out, fear of getting in. What's my expectation of the stock to move up or down based on this share size? right? It's a $20 stock, but I'll show you where later on, where we'll see, we can set some targets and plan profitable trades to the up or the downside. 
because these ones, we don't know if it's buying or selling. It is a, it is a trade that came across the ticker that says, oh, by the way, here's 13 million shares at 2035. Like you're not expecting that. You see 100s, 500s, maybe 1,000, and then all of a sudden, 13 million. And you can see that this goes on all the time. Look at the smaller ones around it, right? So moving on from this, by following these dark pool prints, and they're called dark pools for a reason, they're, and that is the proper name for the, they're actually dark pool exchanges. And they're dark because the retail traders like you and I are not supposed to see these trades. A lot of them are reported late, or a lot of them take a long time to fill. And, you know, to get 13 million uh, shares at a specific level might take a day, might take two days. And then they say, oh, by the way, we bought or we sold here. And you can see that on your time and sales, but you'd have to be watching all the time, every single, every single ticker for that. So following the dark pools, we reduce the number of stocks to watch, we forget about the news, the analysts, the TVs. Actually, turn it all off. I don't care. Actually, I personally do care what's going on in the world. But for the sake of my trading, these prints are paramount to all of that. The correction will be over when we see big buyers at the bottom. right? And I'll show you something that's going on with the SPY as well. But that's, that's coming up. We need to reduce our risk and maximize our rewards. Knowing where the big money is trading helps discern its direction. All we know is that a trade executed at a specific price. So what we need to do is we need to map out a trade and trade it without, without bias. And then we can increase the confidence in our trading, right? So what does that leave us? That leaves us with executing our trade, right? So, and, and being human, it's virtually impossible. It, you know, you get excited when you're making money, but remember we're all trading against robots. There are retail traders for sure, but all of these, or I can't say all, but most of these are, most of these prints come off of specific levels, whether they're pivots or moving averages or, or things like that, you're trading against robots. And in that sort of situation, I'm a programmer by nature. I'll just give you, I'll just give you an example. If then else. That's that's what we do in programming. If this happens, do this. Or if this happens, then do this, else do something else. Right. And and that sort of logic. This, when I found the dark pools and I found Steph, this made so much information to me. I'm a, I'm, I'm a classic perfectionist. I have to have an answer for everything. And my answer, when Steph fed me the red pill, any Matrix fans there, was that, well, why did it go there? There was a print. Would you buy this at this level? Show me the prints, right? So this clears up so much of this, um, this guesswork. So let's look, I did mention something about the SPY here. Now this is a chart and I'm not sure of the expertise of everybody that's watching this presentation. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the simpler effect. I'm going to assume that most people have little to no knowledge and I don't mean to offend anybody, but it would, it would greatly help those who are looking to learn, right? So this is a daily chart of the S&P 500. It's one of the, well, it's the most liquid index. It's the most liquid vehicle in the world to trade. And this is also, well, as far as dark pool is concerned, it is the heaviest of prints. So we're all worried about corrections. So we see in the news, oh, retail traders think this and retail traders think that. Well, what I've done on this chart we have each of these candles that are here represents one day. So this is actually a daily chart. And so if I take, for example, this little green one here, we opened at the bottom and we closed at the top. It's green. That means we were positive on the day. The price actually moved up. 
if we have a red candle, we opened higher and closed lower. That's all you need to know for this example. So these lines go all the way back to specific dates. So on March 16th, over here, uh, there was 10 million shares, $4.3 billion traded right here. And then as we move up, there's more. There's another 5 billion, another 4 billion. And these are individual trades by single institutions. That's not retail traders moving this market. Volume and price action move the market. We get up here to the top at almost $460. There's 20 million shares, $9.2 billion in one trade. And we get this very high volume red candle, meaning we opened higher closed lower, and down here is the volume that's in this candle. We're on the lookout because I can't fathom a billion dollars. I can I can fathom a thousand, I can hold a thousand dollars, but $9.2 billion is 45,000 houses. So the house that I have is valued at $200,000. It's 45,000 houses. How many communities is that? How many single, you know, how many families with two kids is that? This is one trade, 20 million shares. So like I mentioned with Uber, well, I don't have a bias on the spy and I don't watch the news. So everybody's screaming inflation, recession, all of this, possibly, but this is a commitment. Nine billion dollars is a commitment to the movement of the price. I want to be on this guy's team. Whether you agree with it, whether you like the stock, you put your bias aside. We're up here. Oh, spies going to the moon. AMC, GameStop, we're going to the moon. What show me the prints? Right? Well, here's not here's 20 million right here. And so we meander down and we start testing these ones that are below. And these ones still hold. You can see these lines, they come down and they touch these dotted lines and then they move down and they move down. And look at the consolidation here. This is over $20 billion here from May to here. And then look at the volume here. All of this and we close below it. Uh-oh, and we got this. We got all this to the bottom. Now, the thing is here is at the bottom, there was 10 million here at the bottom. And what's interesting about that is we got this at 365. And I took this screenshot, I think a day or two ago. And we've moved up. We're testing 380 here, right? So when somebody asks me, is the spy going down or going up? We need to look at the prints because I don't care what anybody else says, because this is something that's tangible. You can see it. I don't need to read an analyst report. I don't because this volume and money here is commitment. Right. So I don't care about anything else. This is something that's tangible to me. So from the top to the bottom here was a 93 point move, $93 a share. And if somebody took 10 million, like this is half, if they took half off the table from the top to the bottom, that's $930 million. I mean, if I had that, I, you know, I'd get some new siding on my house, you know, maybe uh, something like that, you know, just a little more conservative. So how many of you are interested in finding more trades like this? I would be because of everything being human. I don't like the indecision, right? I don't like any of that. I like the certainty of seeing something like this. So let's find it. And aha, look, there it is. There's our needle in the haystack. So let's go over here. This is this project is called Remora Light. And it's something that we worked with in the Java pit for quite some time. Actually, it's a mature product. In September, it will be four years. And this was born out of a lot of blood, sweat, and tears from a lot of people uh, in our trading community. 
And so what I'd like to do in finding this sort of thing, I'm going to show you a couple things. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a watch list. And we're not going to get into too many of the mechanics here like this. One thing I do want to mention, this, this is a project that runs on uh, Microsoft Excel and requires an Office 365 subscription on a Windows PC. And I apologize to you Mac users, um, but Microsoft does not support a lot of the coding that's available to make this work. Eventually, within the next 12 months, I'm looking at it being web-based which will alleviate a lot of that where you would be able to use tablets, smartphones, and, and any, anything. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a watch list and let's call it swings. I'm assuming for the purpose of this example, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna look at longer term swing trades, right? Like for the sake of Uber, because what's my expectation of it moving? And I'll show you that, I'll show you that in a bit. So we've got our, we've got our um, watch list here called swings. And then the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to put Uber in there. And what it gets is the current trading price and its stats for the day, the open, high, low, and close. Now I can map it out. I can put, well, I'm bullish above the specific level or bearish below. But what I, I just want to get the watch list done, and I want to show you some other things first because we need to, in order to help each other, we can do things like this. This tab here called recent prints. So what, what we can do here is this is a list we track over 250 stocks of the ones that are traded um, the most through the dark pools. We don't, we don't catch them all, right? But we do get most of them. And if you can't find something to trade in 250 stocks, I'm not sure what I can tell you, right? There's a little bit of everything, a little bit of something for everyone. But what we can see here is we can see the list of tickers. We can see when their earnings are and at what point in the day the earnings occur, whether it's before the market open or after the market close, their average volume and the current trading price. Now this is live, okay? So AAL is 1386. And it's up 88 cents on the day. Now, the interesting thing here is I'm going to show you how to filter for these sorts of things. Actually, I'll do that now. But before I mention that, we have short interest. It's 14%. Now, these, um, for those of you that are already familiar with trading, this is kind of an indication of the, the sentiment of the investors. So if there's short interest, that means that people are pretty much negative on the stock. So if you're looking for squeezes or something, if there's an ex-dividend date, we want to be careful of that. If you own the stock or you're trading other vehicles, such as options, that might affect you. So let's go ahead and it gives us a clue. Hit control shift and Y or control Y for filter options. So I'm going to do that. Now, this brings up a little form here. And the cool thing about this is I want to scan all of the stocks that we track for, I like 400,000, cumulative 400,000 in the last X number of trading days. So you could go five trading days is a week, 10 is two weeks. You get it, right? Because we don't cover weekends. So if I'll do five days and I'll choose update. So in my case, this takes less than a minute, okay? And while this is going, or maybe I'll just let it finish, we'll see. Yeah, it's going to flicker at me for a minute. So while this is going, we see that here AAL is at 1384. Now, it's got a green arrow in it because it's above the prints. Right in the last five trading days, we had, actually, I'll pause for a minute. I'll let this, this thing's bothering me that it's flickering. It's distracting. We've only got a couple seconds left. Okay, 50 seconds. In 50 seconds, we scanned 250 stocks for everything that meets our criteria, okay? And what we're left with is 
everything that we selected. So like I mentioned, AAL, I was trying to explain. In the last five days, we have had these prints of a high of 1320 and a low of 1248. We're at 1384, so we're, we're above these prints in the last five days, and we're up 87 cents on the day. Well, that's not bad, right? Because in the, in the last week of trading, there's 500,446, and this one catches it, right? This says two trades. Our criteria was anything over 400,000 cumulative. So, for example, if there were four 100,000s, well, that would count, and we would be able to pick that up. So this gives us a result down here at the bottom. It says there's 99 possible trades. So let's eliminate some things, and we can do that um, we can do that here. Like we'll see AMC is below, right? It's got a 436,000. And if we're in between, then it's going to just be yellow, which means we're neither above nor below. It might be something you want to watch if it's a really big print, right? And, and then wait for it to, to break, but we need to map them out. We need a trading plan. If you don't know where you're getting in and you don't know where you're going out or getting out, then there's a problem right? You don't know what your profit target is and you don't know what your potential loss is. So let's eliminate, say we're looking for longs. Well, here I don't, I'm going to exclude the betweens. So that gets us down to 94. Okay. And then let's get rid of the belows. And that gets us down to 77. So as of today, like today is quite bullish on the SPY. SPY's up $9, $8, $9 today. So things are quite bullish. Things are moving up. So whatever we want to trade here. If I was looking for the ones that were short, I'll switch it here. So these are the ones that are actually below prints. Now, when you're setting up swings, swing trades, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket and you don't, and you need to have a short you need a long and a short. Like you, usually you would find something that's weak and short that. So if we're looking for something on the downside, you would like it to be below the prints and down on the day, right? It's weak, right? So it's negative on the day and we're below the prints. So that if we're looking for longs, then we'll get rid of these. So that'll be 17 we don't have to look at. So let's just pick a couple here we were going to do this. So Apple always has prints. We'll pick Apple, AMD, and Amazon. Okay. Now there's a shortcut you can do. I'm just going to, I'm just going to hit it. Control shift and W. And what that does is over here, it adds it to your watch list. So we have them here. Now, we can do something like this. I'm going to look at my settings here. And what I want to do is I want Remora to go back as many days as I want, in this case, 10, over 400,000. And I want to put it in here. I want to put all of my dark pool levels in here. So I'm going to choose OK. So that gives me the opportunity to choose recent prints. Okay, so this took six seconds. And so Uber is above all of the prints in the last two weeks, it's, it's saying. So we're above that print. Now, look, if I move over Uber, see the little red triangles? We've got earnings, XDiv, and then we can see them here in order highest to lowest. So we're above 2187, which was from June 17th. Now, the thing is, is you get a print and you've got to figure out what your expectation is by back testing, right? With Remora, you can go back to January 1st of 2019, pick a day on the chart and go back and look at the prints and see how the stock behaved. As you start trading, you'll find that they sometimes have different personalities. For example, uh, AMC behaves different than Apple, right? Or Amazon behaves different than Tesla or whatever. But you need to, 
as Stephanie says, you need to know who you're sleeping with, right? When you're getting into these and playing around with it for the first time, go back and back test and see what's actually happening. So now we have this, but where do we go from here? All right, I like Uber because it was big. It had the big prints. Apple always has prints. And AMD usually has prints. And Amazon just split. So it's actually, it used to be a $2,300 stock. So each share was $2,300. They split uh, 20 to 1, which means you divide the stock price by 20. And so now we're at about $114, and there's lots and lots of shares on, on Amazon now. So we see here like 2.3 million, 900,000, a million, 4 million at 103.85. So there might be a trade here on the upside. So the next thing that I really wanted to um, discuss here, uh, let me is mapping it, okay? So let, let's map this out. And because I'll show you here, with Uber, this was only, this was only 10 trading days. So you've got to decide and you got to figure out, am I looking at a puddle, a lake, or an ocean, right? You see this, it could be the tip of an iceberg. And actually an iceberg is a better example you know, ask the Titanic, right? And so we do have another shortcut here, which is control T for ticker. And if I put in Uber, and I'm just going to leave everything else blank. Don't worry about the screen being messy. Uh, I'll just, I'll just show you, but we'll put in Uber and I'm just going to click run. So what this winds up doing is it gives you the current price of Uber, 20, about 22.95. Yeah, that matches up. And it gives you the stats for the day, the open, high, low, close, and the volume. The earnings are August 2nd, so that's of note. And it's up 59 cents for the day. Now, we've got two areas here, two groups of data. The first one are all of the prints going back to 2019. And it tells you there's 2,039 individual trades. And we can see our big ones here, right? Some of them, uh, you might see multiples at the same price. So we could actually search by price if we wanted highest to lowest tier. So the highest Uber ever was that we had trades for was 63.52, right? And close to the top, somebody clearly sold 110,000 shares for $7 million they did something like that. Um, and if we click on shares, those are the biggest prints we have ever seen since Uber became public. Those have just passed, right? So on the right-hand side, this lets us summarize. There's so much data here, 2,000, 2000 um, rows. But what I want to do here is you have the option of filtering all of this. So what I want to do is go back, say, 90 days, and I'm only interested in the ones over 500,000. So I could go 400,000 or whatever and click Run. Now, when we look at this, it gives you so many more. Now, the, the pivotal ones are these big ones here. So getting to know the stock and looking at this, you see, well, there's lots of one, there's several one millions, there's a three and a half million. I'm going to, I'm going to, for the purpose of this example, I'm going to increase this to a million and run. So in the last three months, this clears things up a little bit, right? So we have to just in our due diligence. So let's map this out. Okay. So I have this information already going back as far as you want to go. So if I go and look at my trading view, let me knock this one out. Um, I'm going to bring this one up here. And I apologize. I thought this was squared away for the purpose of this. Okay, so here's another chart. And notice... As we were looking at the SPY, this is quite different. It behaves differently. Now, 
what I wound up doing is the same thing I did for what I showed you from the spy. I went back here to October of 2021. And it looks like each time they were selling, right? But when you're looking at these sorts of things, let me zoom in, right? And I didn't put them all in because if I put all of the prints in, there'd be no room for an example. It would just be a mess. So we get a print here. And then we come all the way down, we come up, we test the print, we come down, we come up, there's, oh, look, there's a new print, and we come down, there's another print, and then we break down. So, with these sorts of things, you wind up seeing a pattern. What's your expectation of Uber then, seeing something like this, when we see 26 million down here, right? I... Like, if I saw 26 million, you're like, oh, my God, it's going to blow up overnight. That is few and far between. Actually, when you see something that's massive like this, sit on your hands for a couple of days. Let's map this thing out, right? And I call it, I was joking, I call it trade archaeology, right? Or print archaeology. Because even though we're in the midst of a correction, when we were mapping out the spy for trades, we had to go back to 2020 and 2021 to try and get some of the old print levels, right? And so with that, with finding the old print levels, the question arises, right? How long is the print good for? Well, it's good until it isn't, which is a terrible answer, I know. But if we come back to test that print and there's no support there, like there's no interest in buying. Now remember, we're we're against computers. There's no interest at that point. Then okay, you can take that one off your chart. But what we've seen here is we've come up, we've tested a midpoint. I don't. This is a channel. This is a trading channel, right? And I'm I won't explain that. But this this is a a, a more defined support and resistance, and. So we've come up to the middle of the channel, come back. Now at the bottom here, the bottom of this channel is where we see the 26 million shares. So I don't have a bias on Uber. I can think it's gonna go up, but that doesn't help me, right? What I need to set is what would it have to do for me to get into the trade and I need to map out a long position and a short position. So here, look what Uber did. Let me zoom in. We got these prints down here. See this one here? This was June 17th. It's the 24th. So it hasn't moved much. Well, you can say, oh, well, look, it's from $20, it's moved $3. Yeah, but what's your expectation on a half a billion dollar trade, right? We can come up here, we could, we could fill this and we can move. But if I was bullish on it long term, now, what type of trader are we? Are we doing a day trade? Are we doing an overnight swing trade? Or are we entering a long term position? Everyone is responsible for their own trading plan. If somebody else tells you, oh, buy Uber, well, that doesn't help you. Even if it's a great trade, right? Buy Uber. But the thing is, is if somebody told you to buy it, they have to manage the trade. Okay, I bought it. Now what? Where do I get out? Even if it's a screaming, if it's a fantastic trade and, you know, Steph calls out some amazing things all day you know, and uh, God love her, but I don't take those trades right out of the gate. If I like it, meaning that I've mapped it out and I have a trade and, a, and an exit, then I will take the trade too, right? In the Java pit, Steph shares all of the trades that she gets into. And I really appreciate that because we can go back and see, because she's masterful and been doing it for 30 years. So when you have that type of when you have that type of information at your fingertips, then by all means, to tap the source. So what we saw a lot of times here was Uber coming back and testing these prints, right? So, okay, well, I need Uber 
to close strong here. And I would say 23, we're at 23. Personally, I want this space filled. So I'm going to look 24 as a dollar level. Okay, so if, so um, 20. I, I'd be happy over 24. And then I would take profit here. Moving average, 25.50, middle channel, wait for a pullback maybe. We've got all of this resistance here. And that might be another entry point as we come back up. But my long term, if we're if it truly is bullish, right? 26 million, where did we buy this? At least the top of the channel. 32. But all of these here, this is a huge level too, right? So this is, but that's a really nice trade, right? If we go 23 to 26 to, to 28 or 29, that's great. You know, on the downside, if we break below this channel, okay, if we break below this 18, below this, this channel, and you know what's interesting is this dotted line here goes all the way back to March 16th of 2020. And an interesting thing about Uber is it was a private company and then went public. And what happens in the case of Uber, when it went public, so if you were able to buy the stock before it got listed on the stock exchange, then you were contractually obligated to not sell your shares until a specific date. And so what happened way back then is Uber was tanking below the initial price that everybody bought into it. And so everybody was selling and it was a bloodbath. And then right at the bottom, after all of these sellers got wiped out, right? They're not, I'm not buying, I'm not holding onto the stock. It's a, it's a disaster. Well, we got a 1.5 million buy print at 1980. So you had an institution come in and pick up everything at the bottom. So now what we're at here is this is the, after the lockout, this is the low. And so I would say if we broke below 18, I would follow this down at least 14. And if I go back far enough, 14 is the all time low. And we all know what happened in March of 2020. But, for, but 14 is the all-time low. That's my target because the size of the trade, right? You can always still get in. I mean, if, it, if it's going up and it pulls back a bit and it's strong, like whatever your trading plan, plan is, we're not going to capture it the, the absolute low to the absolute high. You want a good portion of the trade. You know, you want the meat and guts part of it. You know, you can... You can have your meat and potatoes and leave the vegetables to later, right? Give them to the dog. You'll get most of the trade, right? So th that here is my trade on Uber. If we close strong below 24, my target's 26, 29. Top of the channel, up to 33, right? Now we have to be careful that earnings here are August 4th, and that can affect the price of the stock as well. And so I personally don't hold any trade on a stock into earnings. That to me, it's risky. And I'm not privy to know like these institutions, what the earnings report is or what the stock is actually going to do prior to. I try and preserve my capital there. Okay, so let's move on here to trading it. Okay. So let's go back and I want to show you this is worth the price of admission because it's free. So, oh, anyway, Uber, okay, bullish above, what did I say, 24, target 26, 28, 30, 33. And I'm bearish below 18. Um, I'm going to do 16... 75. Those of you in the Java pit will know why. I'll do 15, 14, and I'll do 1250. I forget what that 
I forget what that super low level was. Um, but anyway, that's my that's my target. As these move, right? So this Uber turned gray, right? Because it's at 23. So it's neither above 24 nor below 18. And I'll show you something here. Um, Apple, see, Apple is 140. And so if we were bullish above 140, look, it turns green. Okay, so if we were bearish below, say, 141, it turns red. So you can visually see all of this happened. Now, I want to give a plug to Steph's Dark Pool Insights. She does a service where she goes through all 250 stocks every week, gives you all of this. She maps out the trade for you. Well, she filters the 250, but usually, God love her, drives me crazy. She's like, oh, I've got my insights. There's 70 of them. And then so I'm, uh, yeah, I've got some dents on the keyboard from uh, seeing all of those. So let me give you an example, right? Because we've done Uber. We've looked at this together and I've got my I've got my trade. I'm not gonna enter Uber below $24, right? That's my trade, but I have my targets. And these sort of things, this is a longer term swing. I'm not expecting it to move $2 in a day or $6 because, and you would know this, right? Because whatever stock you're looking at, know what, know who you're sleeping with. Past performance, right? Have a good look at it. But I want to show you, this is Steph's insights. So this week, she did all of these. She always does the major indexes, SPY, QIWM. And so the SPY, she was bullish above 380. And we're already above 385. So that's a great trade. She called it out for you. She's like, if we break 380, you know, balls to the wall. We're bullish. And here's their targets, two and a half dollar increments. And we also see all of the dark pool levels. So if we're at 385, the next biggest dark pool level is 389.95. You don't even have to look it up. There it is right there. It's a 17 million shares over 68 trades that they got at exactly 389.95. And then 401 is another 13 million, right? So we're golden. So what you wind up doing with something like this is you pick the ones you want to trade. It's like, well, I'm not trading a $400 stock or whatever, and I'm, I'm not trading, I don't do drugs, so I'm not trading, you know, Pfizer, Teva, all of those, then eliminate them, right? So this saves hours of work because when you subscribe to her insights, you know, you get the video and she's drawn the trend lines for you, right? But you have to do your own due diligence and plan this sort of thing. Not all of them work out, but notice that with something like this, Steph has never indicated a bias ever. If the stock does this, this is my target, whether it's the up or the downside. We don't have a bias. And that's the really difficult part of being human, right? So we go all the way down. We had some tech and then there's some regular stocks here. So whatever you wanted to trade, right? Whether it's oil or cars, like electric cars, Neo, Nikola, you know, Rivian, those down there, you can see Exxon Mobile is tanking, right? So look, we're below all of these prints. We're coming down. If we break 85, we might, uh, well, look, if we break 85, she's got some targets to the downside. So this is great. So let's go ahead and set up a trade. And you need to be able to map out your trade because say it's the next day. If I go over here, right, and say this is today, it's like, okay, well, Uber, yeah, what's it doing today? I don't know. Where would we get in? So what we can do is we can go over here. I'm going to go back. Um, well, we could do it from anywhere. Oh, I don't want to give the farm away. Dashboard is another um, uh, sneaky thing I wanted to show you later. But, but there's Control Shift and S, and you'll like this because we can, for example, if we were trading Uber, I want to include, for example, well, I'll do it this way first. And say we're trading the stock 
And I want to go back 30 days looking for prints over 1 million. I'm going to choose run. And what we have here, these are all of the support and resistance lines all ready for the day. So if I was trading Uber and I want to say, at what point can I grab 20 cents on Uber? Well, the current price is $23. So if I look at $23, well, we have we have a resistance here at 2312 but if we break that if we break that 12 i've got 35 cents to 2347 and if we break that i've got a 70 cent move to a higher resistance at 2417 right so if we were coming down say we were at 25 well if we were at if we were at 25 then we've got a dollar move to 2417 if we were if we were going that way. So you have all of this. Now what I can do is I can include the prints as well because as you saw, prints were also support and resistance. So let me choose run. What we have here now is the ones that met our criteria in the last month that were over a million. They're also in this list. They're support and resistance too. If you wanted to reduce that a little bit, let's go down to 400,000 and choose run. Then you, then you see more of your print. So what I wind up doing here is I choose copy and I will um, open Word. no spacing. And what do we get? I print these sheets out. And then what I do is I eyeball the price because I know here's my trade. If we break 22.75, I'm into the top of the dollar. I can scalp 20 cents. Now, 20 cents doesn't sound like a lot. If you have 500 shares though, it's a hundred bucks something like that. And it is a smaller, it is a, it is a lower price stock, right? If you were trading something like uh, Tesla or well, Amazon, when it was a couple or Google was a $2,000 stock, you might have larger pockets here. What I usually do with mine is uh, I, I personally trade the spy. That's my, that's my jam. And I'll go back a month over 1 million and I do 50 cent pockets for today. And where are we? Holy geez. Oh yeah, we're at 387.56. So there's not really anything. Oh, I did $50, that's bad. 387.56. So if we were to get in, like the spy's been going up all day, but if we needed to get in again, well, you might have a trade close to where you're at up to this resistance, 388.50. Um, I would say that we're overextended for the day. It's up almost $10. So for the sake of argument, I wouldn't trade it. But for the sake of the example, let's see what's going on. Now, if we were doing swings, right? Say I want to do a swing for the SPY into tomorrow. Well, where are my support and resistances going to be? None of that information is populated until the next day. And so what I can do is I can do my pivot calculation for the next day and choose run. Now, nerd alert, pivots are calculated on variations of the high of the day, the low, and the close. But because it, the day hasn't closed yet, we can get an estimation based on the current price. So what we would see tomorrow, like if we're trading at 387.44 right now, then let's look at our support and resistances, right? We're at um, 387.88. Yeah, this is a bit of a mess, isn't it? We've got, where would we get 50 cents here tomorrow? And if it's, is it going to gap up? If I was bullish, we'd have to look at the chart. If I was bearish, where would, where would we go? What I would like to do in instances like this 
is if you have like the third resistance above you, then, you know, there are certain trades that you can take where you can make money if it never hits it, right? Uh, but if I'm looking for a swing and say I'm going long, I'm either holding the stock or using other vehicles to trade, uh, then you would want to know where there's going to be uh, a lot of resistance because these levels here are other institutional PCs buying and selling at these levels. And if you don't believe me, I'll show you something. Let's go back here. And I'm, let's look at Uber on the five minute. And that will come back over here. This is today. Okay, look at these these thin white lines are all of those lines that Remora gave us. So we come down, pretty much test one. Come back up, hold, test this one. We break above this one. You break up, up thrust, pull back. You're breaking it again. There's your entry. 2250. We're breaking up here. And where's your target? The next one, right? I would have taken profit here at this one, 2294. So we know that from here, about 2267, 68, to here, 2293, 68, 80, 25 cents, right? There's other technical indications here that may indicate that this is going through. That's another discussion. But look at what it did, is it came up and tested this print. Look at that. Went up to the print, it hung out. Like they, these, each candle in this instance is five minutes. So this hung around there for half an hour, came down to the next previous, the next resistance, which was now support, up, back down to it, all the way up. I dare you to put that on anything. Bitcoin, futures, spy, any ticker, right? And then there you have it. There's our trading plan. If we if we open, come down and test the close, break up, there's my entry. But the thing is, is Ramar is giving it all to you beforehand, and you can um, and you can project what it's going to be for the next day. So the other thing I wanted to show you here was the dashboard. So at the end of the trading day, probably 10 minutes after the market closes, Remora gets an update. And you can do that on the main page, right? You just update data. And then so this actually summarizes, hey, these are all of the new prints for the trading day. So since we're still in the middle of the trading day today, then these ones are for the previous day. But you look at some of these ones that are here, 1.6 million on AMD. Cisco was a popular one. You can actually capture lots of little prints. Like, look, here, Amazon had 1.7 million over four trades. And we would pick that up if you looked. But this gives you ideas for actually trading because you might see something that's really weird or that's a stock that's related to something you're trading, right? There's those sorts of things as well. So, um, Two other things, and then we'll get we'll uh, we'll wrap up. This here, the late prints, lets you see the indices side by side. Okay, so the spy, right, the top 500 stocks, the S and P 500. The blue one is the Nasdaq. That's a technology ETF. The IWM is the Russell 2000. That's the the top 2000 stocks. And then we have the diamonds, which is the Dow, and that's the top 30 industrials, right? It doesn't get a lot. But when we're spotting corrections, look at this. We saw this here, the 10 million at the bottom. We see all of this across the queues and the IWM. They might be, buy they might be buy buying, but we have this. I am not going long on the SPY until we close above 390. Makes sense, right? There's 68 trades totaling 22 million shares. 
And these trades were 13% of the volume traded for the entire day. But that's retail traders, institutional trades, everything together. This one trade was 13%, right? I want to be on that guy's team, right? That's, that's, um, that's important there. So you can see those. Now, there I've only covered probably 15% of the features that are that are here. And um, I can be pretty long-winded and I wanna give you some of your day back. So let's go ahead and, and get wrapped up here. So we've got our trading plans. And I wanted to ask you, would you ever be comfortable getting into a position without knowing if there are prints after what I showed you? Because me emotionally, it cleared up so many things because I was able to turn off the TV and turn off the radio. When you listen to analysts, oh yeah, yeah, buy, buy this, buy that, and it reverses. This has been downgraded, but it goes up. I personally think with my tinfoil conspiracy hat that they're tricking, in re they're tricking retail traders to sell so that they can buy those shares. Where are they gonna get them from? They're going to take them from us and the trade's going to go against us and we're going to be all upset. So why don't we follow them? So I got a special offer. We're going to take our trading to the next level. Steph runs a training pit. That's a monthly subscription. If you subscribe to Remora, you get two free weeks in the training pit and you can subscribe. There's the link there and I'll cover that again. The benefit of the training pit is there's expert instructors. They teach stock options trading, setting up and measuring your goals, planning your trading future. Now remember, this is a business. You need to be serious about it, right? If you go to university, you invest in your education. You wouldn't read a book on heart surgery and then practice on a loved one, right? This is not gambling, not when you have, we, we have planned exits, entries, and profit targets, and we've mitigated our risk, right? Remove, we learn how to move from trading paper to live trading. Nobody should do live trading unless you're successful. Paper trading, keeping yourself accountable and measuring your progress. There's also, um, lots of tools that are available people use, like I showed TradingView, there's Thinkorswim, there's other types of applications that are widely used in the industry for stock trading. There are classes on that as well. So the next steps moving forward is if you would like a subscription to Remora Light after the U.S. Uh, holiday, so after the July 4th weekend, uh, anybody who subscribes, we're setting up a kickoff call and it's going to be a couple hours. So it's questions and answers and getting started with Remora because the time that I spent with you really wasn't, as far as the product was concerned, it's there wasn't a lot in there that we actually discussed. Some of those features that I showed you are, are critical and I use it every day. So we use top tips for using Remora. And you can subscribe here at thedarkpools.com, uh, services and Remora Light. And, you, and I believe you'll be able to see that because you logged in to either the free room or you have a subscription somewhere else. Now, Remora Light help, that's me, support at remoralight.com. So I wanted to take this moment to thank you all for listening to me on the Find It, Map It, Trade It. Uh, this is the website for Remora, and uh, I'm E-Man, and I developed Remora, uh, and it was really out of out of love for the Java Pit family. And um, so with that, RemoraLight.com is where you would go to get information, training videos. If you want to subscribe, I am working on some educational videos, things like that, and then we can stay in touch. So I haven't... I haven't looked for any questions. Um, 
and I'm not sure if there's any questions that I can answer. I wasn't watching any of the rooms. Okay, but I'll give this back to you. Thanks so much, everyone, for your time, and I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you around. <laughs>